This is section 6.2 on adding and subtracting rational numbers. And I just realized that I used an abbreviation up here. Um, this is the abbreviation for rational numbers. I didn't mean to use that. I just did it without thinking. Um, you guys have probably seen the real numbers before. It's like a double legged R. This is the symbol for the rational numbers and it's Q for quotient. Um, anyway, fun fact there. All right, so the properties of rational number addition. These should start looking pretty familiar by now because we did these with whole numbers and then we did them again with integers. And now here we are again with rational numbers. The closure property for addition. The sum of any two rational numbers is always a rational number. We know that that's what closure means. It means you do this operation to this number group and your answer is always in this number group. The commutative property for addition says that you can flip-flop and everything's good. The associative property that you can reassociate, you can basically add in any order. The additive identity property, remember that means that you should be able to add zero either way, zero plus two fifths or two fifths plus zero, and you get um, the same number back. The additive inverse was something new that we encountered with the integers, and that was basically the opposite signs. When you add a number and it's opposite, you always get zero. And that that opposite sign is called the additive inverse element. All right, let's talk about adding and subtracting fractions. Now, when we multiply fractions, we don't need a common denominator. Multiplying fractions is very natural. It's kind of what you feel inclined to do, right? You multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Adding, you really, really want to do that, right? You just feel like it's going to be one plus two over five plus five. That's not the case. Okay. If you have the same denominator, then these two fractions keep that denominator and add the numerators. I want you to think of denominators as units. Okay. If you had one foot plus two inches, that would not be three foot inches. You would have to get the two into the same unit in order to add or subtract them. Same thing, one fifth and two thirds. Fifth and thirds are not the same unit. So you can't add those together, you know, this unit plus this unit and get a totally different unit. You can't add feet inches and get yards. So fractions work the same way. In order to add or subtract, you have to have a common unit or common size. All right, so let's talk about how to add fractions. There's two ways we can look at this, okay? And this is doing it by hand, okay? That we get one fifth plus two thirds. Now, you now if you wanted to do the fraction bars, would not be. There's another one third. Okay, you are hiding back there. I see you. This one would not be so good to model because I'm going to end up with thirteen fifteenths, and the biggest fraction I have is a twelfth. So this one isn't going to be so good to to model with the fraction bars. But I just want to address that before I started. We can do this two ways. We can get a common denominator. The least common multiple of 5 and 3 is 15. Then we would have to multiply each fraction by 1 to make that fraction have this denominator. So this 1 fifth fraction, I had to multiply it by 1 in the form of 3 over 3. The two-thirds fraction, I had to multiply it by 1 in the form of 5 over 5. That makes each one of these fractions into 3 over 15 and 10 over 15, okay, which combines them then into 13 over 15. So we have to get that common denominator. Okay, before we can add those numerators together. Now, something sometimes students will 
you know, multiply these by one and then try to reduce this. You don't want to do that because it's going to take you back to one fifth. The whole point of multiplying by one was to get it into a bigger fraction that had the same denominator. So, all right, um, another way that you can add or subtract fractions, and this way I tried to color code it for you. Um, I've, um, I've seen this a few times in books and, and stuff. Well, not in books. I've seen it on like Pinterest and stuff recently. Um, this is the way that my dad taught me to add and subtract fractions. And this way is pretty cool if you don't have too big a numbers. So if you multiply diagonally this way, you get three. So I did that in pink. If you multiply diagonally this way, you get 10. Did that one in blue. And then if you multiply straight across five times three, that's going to be your denominator. So multiplying those out, you get three plus 10 over 15, which is 13 over 15. So what this way does is it goes ahead and multiplies this fraction by three over three. It multiplies that one by five over five. But this gets messy if these numbers are really big because this multiplication straight across the bottom doesn't give you the least common denominator all the time. It will always give you a common denominator. It just may not be the least. So what that means is this technique will always work. You just may have to do some serious reducing at the end. So. All right, so let's do some fraction bars to add one third plus one half. So let me get some of those out. So a third plus one half. So how much is that? Well, let's grab our one. All right, it's not one. It's not the same length as one. So let's see, maybe there are some other ones. Well, let's see, it can't be thirds because I can't make a half out of thirds. Maybe some, I don't know, some fourths. Maybe we can put together some fourths to get here. Sorry, I'm all clanking around. I'm sure that's really loud on the mic. Um, nope, nope, fourths isn't going to work. Okay, how about fifths? I feel good about this. This is going to work, right? Fifths, how many fifths am I going to need? Oops, looking close. Oh, look at that. Nope. All right, sixths. So check it out. One third plus a half is one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the same length, so they have the same value. Now, if you did want to do my dad's shortcut for that one, it would be one third plus one half. That's two times one is two. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. So, easy peasy. All right, let's look at subtraction. So take a second, look at what I've done before I explain it. So pause the video, look at both ways. So I did it both ways here, and see if you can figure out what all is happening. Okay? So first up, I got a common denominator. The common denominator for 8 and 4 is 8. The least common multiple of 8 and 4 is 8. This one already had a denominator of 8, so I only had to work on changing the 1 fourth to have a denominator of 8. So I multiplied it by 2 over 2. Remember, that's utilizing the, where was it? Oh, it was back in 6, 1 that um, multiplication process where you multiply by the same number and you know, by multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So that gives me two over eight. Now I've got the same denominator. You keep that denominator because that's your units. And then five minus two is three. So down here, I just drew a picture where I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces, five of which are shaded. And then I came back through and took my the eights. And you see how in blue I outlined them into four sections. 
So the things in blue are my one fourth. And you can see my one fourth is two eighths right there. So when I take out that one fourth or two eighths, I'm left with one, two, three eighths. If you use my dad's technique, you multiply this way, you get 20. This way you get eight. And then 32, you get 12 over 32. But because we had a denominator of 32, which was not the least common denominator, but it is still common, so it'll still work. We do have to reduce. So just like you can multiply by one, you know, same number top and bottom, you can divide by the same number top and bottom. That's dividing by one. It does not change the value of the fraction. It just makes it look different. So it's like throwing lipstick and a dress on it. Doesn't change it, just makes it look different, better. I don't know. So divide both those by four and we get three eighths. Uh, all right. Mixed numbers are made up of an integer and a fractional part of another integer. So let's talk about converting mixed numbers to fractions and fractions to mixed numbers. So in a mixed number, if you look at six and two sevenths, that's the same thing as six plus two sevenths. That's really odd for us because we're used to smushing in algebra that smushing means multiplication. So here that smushing might feel multiplicative, but it's not. So if you get a common denominator for these of say seven, because that's a denominator of one. And so you take six over one, grab my different color here, and I multiply that by seven over seven. I'm going to add two over seven. I get 42 over seven plus two over seven. And I ran out of room. I wrote too big. And that's 44 over seven. So there's the fraction that goes along with this mixed number. So those are equivalent. Now, do you have to do this every time where you write it out as addition and then you get the common denominator and stuff? No, there's a shortcut. So let's talk about the shortcut and why it works. If you have six and two sevenths, the shortcut is that you multiply that and you add that and you keep it over the same denominator. So the shortcuts to do seven times six plus two all over seven. Well, let's see here. Look up there. See that? What? That's crazy, right? It's the same thing. That's not a coincidence. That always is going to happen that way. Because I'm always going to have a denominator of one on this integer part over here. So I'm always going to have to get a common denominator by using this denominator. So I'm always going to have to multiply by that number. So I'm always going to have to multiply by that number. And then once you have the common denominator, you add the numerator. So that's what the two is. So, so there's the shortcut. All right. So to convert a mixed number to a fraction, we have to multiply and then add. Maybe it makes sense then that to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number, we have to divide and subtract. We have to undo everything we just did. Now, I just like this comp being called an improper fraction. There's nothing wrong with it. It's completely normal, but that's just the terminology that's used. But I, um, I'm really, I really dislike teachers that force students to write these as a mixed number. If that's the lesson that you're, you're working on, then yes. But from here on out, 
it's okay if some of the answers are left as fractions. They don't have to all be converted to mixed numbers. So just want to throw that little soapbox at you. All right, so remember that the fraction bar means division. I'm going to leave that negative hanging out. I'll be back for him later. So I'm going to long divide 5 into 13. All right, so 5 goes into 13. 2 times, 2 times 5 is 10. We're going to subtract, and we get 3. All right, so this 2 up here is my integer part. So 2, this 3 is my remainder. So I have 3 left over out of 5. And then my negatives just brought along for the ride. So that's your remainder. And that's your quotient. The quotient is how many full times 5 goes into 13. The remainder is the part of this total of 5 that's left over. And then the negative I just brought along for the right. I didn't bother putting it into the uh, computation. Okay, let's talk about adding mixed numbers. So pause the video and without a calculator, see if you can add those mixed numbers. All right, well, I hope that you grouped some compatible numbers. That term sound familiar? So remember that this is really just 4 plus 2 fifths plus 2 plus a half plus 3 fifths. Now let's group some compatible numbers in here. 2 fifths and 3 fifths, those are nice and compatible because they have the same denominator. And of course my 4 and my 2 are compatible because they're both whole numbers. So my 4 plus 2 is going to be 6. My 2 fifths plus 3 fifths is going to be 5 fifths, which is the same thing as 1. And then I've got that 1 half. So that's 6 plus 1 plus a half which is seven and a half. So we're not going to get into, you know, a whole bunch of like changing denominators and stuff like that with adding and subtracting mixed numbers, um, mainly for the, um, for the lower grades, you know, like fourth, Mm, yeah, probably fourth grade and below. This wouldn't happen until about fifth grade. And then you would do it um, by getting common denominators and having to do some, um, maybe some regrouping and stuff. Maybe that is toward the end of fourth grade that you have to do some um, regrouping with those. Which maybe I will write up something else about that to, uh, to add to this. Um, a good way to estimate fractions is to use the benchmark fractions, like, you know, the one halves, zero, a half, one, one and a half, two. So if you're going to estimate this four sixths, that one is eh, pretty close to a half. If you're just going to use those benchmarks, seven eighths, pretty close to one. So that's about one and a half. Now, here's the thing. When you're estimating these fractions, these fractions, the form n minus one over n, like seven over eight, Kids tend to recognize those as being close to 1, like 7 over 8, 8 over 9, 9 over 10, 11 over 12, 15 over 16. Those fractions, you know, the, the kids tend to realize that those are close to 1. The 4 over 6, that one's not as easily recognized as being close to a half. You have to think about 6 and what half of 6 is. So half of 6 is 3. Okay, well 4 is kind of close to 3, so that's a little bit bigger than a half. So that's how you would you would maybe want to um, to tackle that. So, OK, um, I think I am going to write up some extra stuff to uh, put at the end of this. So this does end this section, but I think I will go ahead and write up some addition, subtraction 
that requires some regrouping as well and add it to my notes. And then if you guys have any questions about those, you can always um, send me an email just in case my notes don't make sense. So, all right, that concludes 6-2.